On this channel, we don't just sell synthesizers, we also buy them. Why don't you join me as we head into Stockholm City for a mystery synth pickup? Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody, and the family. Would you like to say hello? Hello. Rest of the family? Hello, hello. <laughs> well, we've just been to Ikea and now we are on our way home, but we'll take a slight detour first to pick up a vintage synthesizer. I know that you guys have missed the vintage synth pickups, so we're going to do one this evening. So the synthesizer we are going to pick up today is a bit of a classic. Oh, the next one here on the left. Oh. So the synthesizer we are picking up today is a bit of a classic. I think it's fair to say that this particular... I think it's fair to say that nearly every recording studio in the 90s had one of these. And you've heard it on countless hit records, TV shows, and movies. In 600 meters, turn right. The deal is done, we are on our way home. I've got to say, for a 20 year old synth, I think it's about 20 years old, sometime in the 90s, we'll have to check when we get home. It still sounded really, really good. Thanks very much to Daniel, a nice bloke, and as the icing on the cake, he showed us around a very old, charming studio down in the basement with lots of really cool vintage guitar amps, bass amps, and even a really cool they called again ghetto blasters that's it from the late 70s so we're on our way home now i'll play you some backing music from this very same instrument and then when we get home it'll actually probably be a few weeks from now i'll do a reveal video for you although i think by now you know what it is
So what we have here, as many of you no doubt guessed, is the JV1080 from Roland. And this particular unit is in immaculate condition. It's really, really nice. It's probably lived in a rack for most of its life. These rack units don't get as beat up as the keyboard units. But anyway, let me give you a few close-up shots of this one. All that I know about this unit is that it's from 1994 and it was hugely popular, widespread in recording studios and used in many a music, film and TV production. But I don't know much more than that. Why don't we go over to the computer and check what this thing is all about? Right, let's see what comes up on Google then. Let's take Vintage Synth Explorer to begin with. There it is. What do we have to say about this? The JV1080 was one of the hottest and most popular digital synthesizers ever to come from Roland. What was I telling you? Incredible sound quality capable of emulating any instrument imaginable, plus totally fat analog synth type sounds and loads of percussion. 64 voices of polyphony, 16 part multi timbral. It's no wonder that this is every part of almost every film score composer setup, as well as many more artists and hobbyists. Hobbyists, that's me. So eight megabytes of sounds. Sounds, that's not much by today's standards. But it does sound great, as you'll hear. It also offers a lot of expandability with four expansion slots and two data card memory slots. You can get up to 42 megs of sounds, okay, by adding any of the popular JV80 expansion cards. There were 20 of these published, I do believe, and I still see them for sale occasionally today. So maybe we'll try out some expansions at some time. Now, there's one other resource I want to show you today. And it's Don Solaris's excellent JV page. He's got some fabulous patches, by the way, that we're going to try out someday. But here we go. This is one, what I wanted to show you, the Ultimate Roland JVJD XV FAQ. So Don Solaris then is a name that's very familiar to me for many, many years, and I'm not really sure why. And recently in the last few weeks, we've had many comments referring to him. And then all of a sudden he posts a comment himself on one of my videos. And now I've stumbled across this rather excellent resource that he's written about this series of synths. So every technical detail you possibly wanted to know about sample rates and DACs is on this page. Let's scroll through it and just see what catches our attention. JD versus XV series. We've got a nice family tree here that we'll take a look at in a second. Let's carry on down. I want you to go and read this page yourself if you're an owner of one of these instruments. There, I can see the 1080 there. There has been a lot of talk about the difference in sound within units that should be based on the same engine, yeah. All the same sounds from the 1080 were included on the 2080, the 5080 and so on, but people do say that the 1080 sounds best. Why might that be? The 1080 has a 32 kilohertz sample rate, so not even CD quality, but the DACs were 18 bits. And here you, you can actually see which chip it was that did the conversions. Very interesting. JVXP use a destructive form of wave compression. Yes, the samples on the ROM are compressed and it's actually an MP3 style according to Don here. Some people claim they can hear the difference of JV1080 versus 2080. Well, if we ever get them both in the shack, I'll do that test for you. Compatibility, some notes here about that. The patches, this might be interesting. JV1080 contains some of the JV80 patches. JV2080 contains all of the JV1080 patches, plus a bank of additional ones. XV5080 and 3080 contain all of the 2080 patches, blah, blah, blah. What I've noticed is that all the way up through the lineage, all the way to the Integra that I have, we still have the 1080 core sounds, which is pretty fabulous, I think. Where is this family tree that I'm looking for? Here we go. This I think you might find interesting. Let's find the 1080 here. There it is in the middle, and that's derived from the JV90. The 1080 branches out then to the JV1010, and I used to have one of these. I didn't like it very much. It was a half rack module. I used it in a blues band, and I was very disappointed with the Rhodes and the piano sounds. And then the Nord Electro was launched, and I never looked back. 
I was triggering it from a Nord lead as well. That was my blues band setup. A Nord lead triggering a 1010. But a 1080 grew to become the 2080 and then the 5080. And you can see how it then became XV3080, 5050, 2020. Many, many different rack units here. And this branch here shows the keyboard models. I remember having serious case of gas for the XP30 when that one came out. The Integra isn't shown on this list, but it would be under this box, I presume. Okay, a few notes about the timeline. What does Don say here about the 1080? A huge step forward for Roland. This was the most popular module of the 90s. New filters, voice structures, 448 waveforms. Interesting. Matrix control, new features. The 1010, which I said I had, was the 1080 and a half rack module. Session patches included, so it had more sounds than my 1080. Super JV has a filter from the JD series. Okay. People claim it sounds better based on a far superior RISC processor. This is interesting stuff. I'm going to read this word for word a little bit later, but now I want to move on. So then, what are my plans for the 1080? Well, I have a few ideas that I want to share with you. Firstly, of course, it's inevitable. We'll do the comparison of this against the Roland Cloud JV1080 VST. Also, why don't we do a comparison of this, a 20-year-old JV, with this, my five-year-old uh, Integra 7. Just how far has synth technology come in 20 years? I think that will be very interesting. Of course, we'll make some music with both of these as well, perhaps using this, that one there, it might be interesting to do some Ableton launchpad stuff, but using hardware. Finally then, I've got a nice idea that I want to share with you for a new series of videos. These two are rack synthesizers, as you can see. Now, I've told you before, I don't have space to have a rig of keyboard synthesizers in my home, at least not connected together all the time. But I could probably squeeze in a rack full of vintage rack synthesizers. Yes, Espen Craft is to blame for this. He inspired me to get back into hardware synthesizers. And a lot of these rack synths from the 90s and the noughties are really good value for money these days. So expect to see a lot more of that on this channel. Something along the lines of Woody's rack of cheap synths. But that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the pickup and seeing some new hardware on the channel. Much more to come. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Thank you if you already have. And I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.